Welcome to Pause for Peace. My name is Jewel Nyhuis, and I pastor Hillwood Presbyterian Church USA that gathers on the west side of Nashville, Tennessee, coming together in love to be sent out in grace to be a blessing in the world. This is episode 10, and I'm glad you joined us. I hope you are having a great start to the month of February. February 1st is actually a special feast day in the Christian world. It's a ancient festival, actually, in the Celtic world as well. February 1st, or right around this time at the start of February, is this beautiful festival, this beautiful time to honor the woman in the Christian tradition we call Saint Bridget. Sometimes we hear her name called Brigitte, and we also know from the, the beautiful gifts of the Celtic world that Bridget is a representation for some, a reminder through the Celtic world of the, the, the goddess who was about the greening of all the earth, the goddess of life, the goddess Bridget, Brigitte. It is understood that this woman we celebrate and call today Saint Bridget was actually born a, around about 451 CE and she lived until about 523 CE and she's attributed as bringing Christianity to Ireland. It's said that her own mother was a Christian, but that her father or her stepfather was actually a part of the, the Celtic holy people, the, the leaders in the spiritual community, the keepers of wisdom among the ancient Celts who were called the Druids. And so we see in this woman we call Bridget, this saint that we celebrate on February 1st in the Christian tradition, we see in this woman the coming together of two worlds. Two worlds in the, in the Celtic Christianity understanding that, that don't erase one another. Two worlds that bring together the ancient wisdom of the Celtic tradition with this wisdom emerging in the one called Jesus the Christ. And even we hear legends about St. Brigitte being born at twilight between the, the time of the moon and the time of the sun. We hear of St. Brigitte, we hear legends of her being born at the threshold, not her mother not inside the home, but not outside of the home. And there is a sense that in St. Bridget, we can celebrate the coming together of what often are called holy opposites. In fact, we see in St. Bridget and in this way of the Celtic being, this this celebration of the internal, this glory of all the earth, this meeting place between earth and heaven, between the outer and the inner, everything that comes together in St. Brigitte. We even say this coming together of the holy opposites of the masculine and the feminine that come together and create so much energy that all things come back to life. There's so much that I could share about St. Brigitte. I had the great experience just about a year and a half ago of being able to be on the Holy Isle of Iona in Scotland, where there are legends that St. Brigitte had lived herself. And it was up on the hill in Dunai where I was introduced to what is understood to be one of the ancient wells still left in Scotland, very few left in Scotland as the reformers in the 16th and 17th century came in, these Protestant reformers came in and did away with such things they thought were pagan. But Brigitte and her community in Kildare, where she was the leader, 
Brigitte continued to celebrate the goodness of the earth. She continued to encourage the, the folks to, to keep the fire, the fire of the spirit, the fire of life going. She wove together this understanding from the Celtic world and these, these lessons from Christianity and wove them together in a way that reminds us that it is the light of God, the light of life that lives within all things and is to be tended within ourselves. For me, because that is so much a part of Bridget and of Brigitte, it is an important day to celebrate with the lighting of candles, with the remembrance of fire and the fire that we keep within us that we might be about the work of peace in the world. Well, on that hill of Danai, I had an opportunity to, to just put my feet into this ancient well attributed to be a well of St. Bridget, St. Brigitte. And it was there that I was first introduced to what is known in Ireland as the Irish cross, the cross of St. Bridget, which is simply a cross that is woven in equal sides, four equal sides, four equal sides out of reeds. You can even see in this, this cross of Bridget, like the turning of it and the, the beginning of the sun bursting through the darkness. That symbolism again of Bridget herself coming into this world, St. Bridget herself coming into this world as the darkness was receding to light. One other thing to know about St. Bridget and the Celtic world is that on this season, right around February 1st, February, somewhere between February 1st and February 5th, there is an ancient tradition that is celebrated, a ritual, an honoring of the midway point between winter and spring called Embolc. And the Feast of Embolc is a time that is a reminder that life comes from the belly. Embolc itself actually means in the belly. And so we remember that life emerges out of the belly of the earth. All beings emerge out of the belly, the womb of the mother. New life emerges out of the belly, out of the darkness that comes in our lives and that calls us to the light. So there are two ways I want us to be engaged in a meditative practice should you desire to participate on this day. I invite you to be about a practice that will emphasize the movement of fire within us and that will return us to groundedness in this earth. So as you enter into this meditative practice, pay attention to your feet. I'm actually going to guide us a little bit and we'll have a little bit of stillness today as well. Guide us through a breath exercise and an awareness of getting our feet down into the earth. Bringing awareness to the earth underneath us and this beautiful gift of life that continues to emerge from the great earth itself. So if you will take off your shoes, if you're able to right now, I'm taking mine off right now. This is a great experience to get your feet flat on the earth. If you have an opportunity to go outside and put your feet in the grass or the patches of what seems to be dying, or even if you have a, a little bit of snow and you can kind of brush it away and get yourself back to what is under there, uh, this is a great opportunity to do so. One amazing way to ground is just laying, just like splayed out, laying on the earth and just allowing yourself to receive the, the gifts that come forth, this, this power of life that God has infused in all things. 
we have a great ability to do that when we're able to do yoga outside on the lawn of Hillwood Presbyterian Church. Wednesdays, one o'clock, you're welcome to join us during the colder months or the super, super hot months of the summer. We meet inside and we have a wonderful opportunity to pay attention to our breath, to move our bodies in a way that unites ourself with the internal and the external and just increases our flexibility, allows us to be able to stay ready to move forth in this world in a way that we can give of ourselves, but also rest, Shavasana being one of our favorite poses. So if you have your shoes off now and can put your feet flat on the ground, on the earth, wherever you might be right now, and just begin to bring awareness to your feet on whatever is down there beneath you, even if you are on a high rise 31st floor, way down deep beneath you, the earth is and holds you. So bring your awareness to the soles of your feet, the bottom of your feet. Let's just pay attention for a little bit as we breathe from the belly. This is that exercise of M bulk, this in the belly-ness. So we're gonna get into our belly today. I'm gonna to invite you, if you will, to put one or both hands right now on your belly. And you breathe in and out from your belly. It's a squeeze box. It's meant to go all the way out and all the way in like a balloon that is expanding. And then when you inhale into the balloon, it's coming back together and it's once again expanding. And you can just release and let it go. Inhale again as your belly goes out and exhale, deflating your belly. And inhale again, pushing out your belly with that air and exhaling again, allowing it to deflate. Continue in that practice as you are able or as feels comfortable as you are bringing awareness to the ground under your feet. Perhaps as you pay attention, you're beginning to feel maybe like a little tingling, something going on there in the soles of your feet. If you're in the grass, you might feel that crunchy brown grass in the Northern Hemisphere that is um, just tickling the bottom of your feet. Or if you have the beauty of green grass right now, you might feel that vibrancy, that life that courses through every blade and allow that to just become aware of that. Just, just feel those sensations on the bottom of your feet. One hand still on your belly, continuing to move that air out and in. Let's invite the fire of the spirit, the fire of God's spirit to awaken in us and we can do so with our breath. There's a particular breathing technique. I'm not an expert in it. You can go Google fire breathing and find out each step yourself or breath of fire. But I know that there is a way when we breathe in a particular way that we actually increase the fire within us, that we actually like bring up that energy 
into us. And so let's just try it, okay? Let me show you and then I will verbally guide you through it. So I take a deep breath. And then I'm going to begin to just breathe in a shallow way, kind of holding my, my breath out in my belly and allowing the air to move in and out through my nose. It might look a little funny, so you might wanna like just be somewhere where nobody's watching you or just enjoy, don't worry about what other people think. So let's take a deep breath. And then we're gonna hold our belly out and then begin that like pumping of the air up and down, up and down, in and out, in and out, um, through our nose. When you are unable to continue that pattern anymore, you can just let it all go. Then we'll take another deep breath. And once again, hold it. Your belly is deeply expanded at this point. It's like the balloon is totally filled up and now we're gonna begin to let it come out, in and out, in and out, in and out through our nose. Just that final release, allowing it all to exhale. You may actually begin to feel yourself warming up. You may begin to feel some flow taking place in you. You might even be getting a little lightheaded. So let's just for a moment, reground ourselves in our feet, heel, toe, heel, toe, opposite heel and toe right now. And allow yourself to be regrounded. This is a really a great opening exercise. This is a good thing to do in bed before you wake up every day. All right, let's go again. Hand back on the belly, leave your feet flat on the earth right now. And we're gonna take, a, take that deep breath to expand the belly. And then I'm, I'm not gonna verbally guide you through it right now. I'm just gonna show you. So you take the deep breath to expand the belly, you hold for just a pause, and then you begin your in and out, in and out, in and out, exhale until you're unable to any longer, and then you let out the deep exhale at the end, okay? And so we're just gonna do this one more time, this awakening of the fire, this like tending the fire, the light that is in us, this, this greening power of God that lives in us. All right, here we go. You may find as you do that every day that you're able to continue to breathe a little bit um, longer. Sometimes when I do this practice, I'll actually count the number of in-outs, in-outs, in-outs I'm able to do and try sometimes to get up to 70 if I can. Some might be able to do more than that, some less. But let's take one, just one deep breath in and out that squeeze box, that balloon expanding and, and deflating right now. We're not gonna add the fire breathing right now. And just release. And one more, in and release. Let's just do one more, in and release. So now let's enter into a time of silence, maybe even turning your attention inward, perhaps even seeing a column of fire, that fire breath that is brought from your belly in your belly all the way up through your torso, your chest, your throat and beyond. And so as we enter into a time of quiet, Maybe you want to just visualize that, see what that fire looks like in you now that it has been awakened. All right, so let's just go ahead. I'll guide us a little bit more 
after we enter into this time of stillness to pay attention to notice what's happening in our interior, especially if you might see or notice a column, like a pillar of fire growing forth from your belly. Be sure you're wiggling your toes every now and again. If you start to feel very lightheaded, there's some ways that we are open now that can make us feel a little unsteady. So just you reground yourself in the earth with your toes. Just wiggling your toes will do that. Let's drop our awareness deeper than our interior column of fire, deeper than our belly. If you can, see that fire extending all the way from your belly, all the way to the earth. This beautiful earth that God has made and, and is such a gift to us, but also is in connection and calls us to be in right relationship with her, with this beautiful mater, matter, mother that holds us all. So pay attention to that fire within you, that interior fire, and see if you can notice it dropping all the way down deep into the earth. At the center of the earth is a ball of fire itself and see if you can connect your fire all the way down into the fire at the core of the earth. If you see that or if you notice that you might even just like have an awareness of like linking your fire down there into the fire of the earth at the core at the center of this globe on which we live in which we live and have our being link it right there so that throughout the day especially when you feel called out of your centeredness when when anything but calm begins to take place within you that you can just bring this awareness and drop it's like dropping your anchor back down deep into the core of the earth feeling yourself this beautiful centered column of fire and let us not neglect to extend that fire beyond us the fire of the heavens this glorious, transcendent, this God that is beyond us is like fire as well, is this amazing greening power, this powerful, powerful force that is life. So we can also extend our fire all the way up beyond us and kind of hook it way up there in the heavens, 
all the way, perhaps even to the sun and beyond at the core of our universe. The center of our world, the sun. Maybe in this column of light, we can move through the rest of this season of winter in the Northern Hemisphere. Perhaps we even meta metaphorically are experiencing a season of winter ourselves. Maybe we're going through a, a time of loss, a time of depression, a time of confusion. When we can come back to this, this light that resides in our belly, when we can awaken it, hook ourselves down into the the fire of the earth and high into the fire of the heavens, the sun, we can remember that we are tended so very well by this force of love that is God. And we too can remember, for those of us who call upon the wisdom of the Christ, we can remember that he is the light, that he reminds us who we are, that we are to the light of God shining for this world. So before we depart these moments of stillness, I want to invite you to bring both of your hands back to your belly. Take a deep breath and pay attention right now to whatever you are noticing within whatever you might be feeling in your whole system, what you might be sensing in your body, in your mind, in your spirit. And one last little story coming out of this tradition of St. Bridget. It is said that St. Bridget, who, who led her community at Kildare, that one of the things she did in this in this monastic community that was both le both led by women and by men, that was this intermixing of women and men living together to be light in the world. It is said that in Kildare, this light that had been kept aflame forever, like for a very long time in the Celtic world, continued to be kept by Bridget and her sisters, by Bridget and her sisters. They continued to tend this light of the fire and to make sure that the fire remained burning brightly throughout even the darkest night, throughout the most difficult moments of their life together and in the world. And so let us honor the feast of St. Bridget. Let us honor this midway point between winter for us in the northern hemisphere and the, the greening of spring let us do all that we can to tend the light the flames of the fire of god that lives in us let us commit daily to rekindling this amazing light within all of us that we might be these people that shine brightly, that radiate peace wherever we find ourselves each day. Blessings for this week ahead, and I hope you will join me next week for episode 11 of Pause for Peace.